When a mother witnesses the family dog causing her disabled son's wheelchair to topple inexplicably, she reacts with horror. Yet, the revelation that follows leaves her utterly shocked. The frantic barking reverberates through the house like an alarm. Sarah's heart races as she dashes towards her son's room. Her breath catching as she swings the door open. Ben lies sprawled on the floor. His wheelchair overturned nearby. Blood stains the carpet. Seeping from his arm. Standing over him is Max. The gentle service dog and her son's guardian. His teeth bared in a menacing snarl. Emitting an unfamiliar growl. Sarah's scream pierces the air. A raw. Helpless cry echoing off the walls. Within minutes. The sound of sirens fills the previously quiet street. Paramedics rush past. Wheeling a gurney with Ben strapped atop it. Tears stream down Sarah's cheeks as she sits in the sterile hospital waiting room. Her voice choked with fragments of what transpired. Hours stretch on agonizingly as she waits. Detective Ramirez introduces himself. Urging her to recount the attack in detail. Though the memory feels foggy. Max's once familiar brown eyes now hold a wildness she cannot place. She struggles to reconcile the image of her son's beloved service dog with the aggression he displayed. But he's a service dog. Sarah protests. Her disbelief evident. Max would never harm Ben. They adore each other. Ramirez takes notes. Explaining that even trained dogs are still animals. A somber veterinarian enters. Informing Sarah that Max has been taken to a shelter as part of protocol. Though they recognize his status as a service animal. Procedures must be followed. Sarah's world tilts further as her heart aches for both her son and his loyal protector. She senses they are both victims of this inexplicable tragedy. Amidst the chaos. Ramirez inquires about anyone else who regularly interacts with Ben. The implication stings. And a seed of doubt takes root within Sarah. Could she have overlooked something amidst the whirlwind of caring for Ben? Has she become blind to subtle changes? Pain. Uncertainty. And fear swirl into a nauseating mix within her. Ramirez assured Sarah he would investigate further. Tucking his notebook away. He expressed his belief that this incident might be more complex than a mere dog attack. Just as Sarah was about to leave. He halted her. Holding up an open bag of Cheetos found next to Ben's overturned wheelchair. Sarah denied that they belonged to Ben. Knowing he didn't eat Cheetos. Perhaps he was experimenting with new tastes as he grew older. Her thoughts raced all the way to the hospital. Had her quest for normalcy and support inadvertently endangered her son? Each sterile beep of the heart monitor intensified her already frayed nerves. Ben slept. His bandaged arm a painful reminder of her perceived failure to safeguard him. The doctor's reassurances that he had escaped with only a fractured arm and muscle tears did little to assuage her guilt. The situation could have been far worse. Guilt consumed Sarah as Detective Ramirez returned his inquiries feeling more like an interrogation. Sarah struggled to recall details amidst the fog of her emotions. Ramirez probed about Max. Ben's routine. And the attack itself. Then. A flicker of memory emerged. She recollected Ben's recent changes in behavior, his increased quietness. Reluctance to engage in exercises. And bouts of frustration bordering on anger. The detective's interest peaked at this revelation. He inquired about any behavioral shifts after Max became part of the family. Sarah sifted through her memories. Max had been a source of comfort for Ben. Facilitating his adjustment to life with a disability. Could their dynamic have changed somehow? Sarah shook her head. Unable to fathom such a possibility. Ramirez's inquiry about the new neighbor sparked flashes of Emily in Sarah's mind her bright smiles. The eagerness to help with babysitting or errands. Initially grateful for the support, Sarah now felt a disquieting unease recalling those moments. 
Emily's fascination with Ben's disability and her insistence on spending time alone with him seemed increasingly suspicious. Sarah recounted these interactions to Detective Ramirez. Had she unknowingly welcomed a threat into their home? Could her longing for relief have clouded her judgment to the lurking dangers? As Ramirez took notes, a chilling realization gripped Sarah. What if the accident and Max's uncharacteristic aggression weren't mere coincidences? What if they were part of something far more sinister? Panic surged within her, igniting a fierce determination to protect her son at any cost. Before heading home, Sarah confronted Emily. The woman's initial surprise swiftly masked by a facade of concern. However, Sarah saw through her friendly demeanor. She scrutinized her neighbor's eyes, finding not warmth but guardedness. A hint of something elusive. Their conversation felt strained. Emily's inquiries about Ben seeming forced despite her carefully crafted facade. Suppressing the urge to hurl accusations. Sarah knew she needed evidence to pierce through Emily's pleasant exterior. Driven by adrenaline and maternal instinct. Sarah embarked on her own investigation. It began with simple online searches. Delving into Emily's social media profiles and public records. What initially appeared wholesome began to unravel. Revealing unsettling inconsistencies. Bit by bit. It unveiled a portrait of a woman capable of reinvention seamlessly blending into new environments. Each uncovered detail eroded the image of a harmless neighbor, exposing the potential danger lurking beneath the surface. Sarah's skin prickled with dread. What if Emily's seemingly benign curiosity masked a darker agenda? What if her fixation on Ben's disability extended beyond innocent interest? Sarah's resolve hardened. She refused to let Ben become another victim in this woman's sinister plot she would protect her son, regardless of the consequences. But first, she needed to check on Max. The animal shelter was a cacophony of despair. The sounds of barks and whimpers reverberating off the cold concrete walls. Sarah found Max tucked away in a corner. His usually vibrant demeanor replaced by a subdued presence. His tail tucked between his legs. As she approached, a soft whine escaped him. And Sarah's heart broke anew. She whispered apologies. But the words caught in her throat. How could she have ever doubted him? A compassionate veterinarian joined her. The same one who had assessed Max upon his arrival. I understand your concerns. He said gently. Animal behavior can be unpredictable. Even in trained dogs. Pausing. He placed a comforting hand on Max's trembling form. He's exhibiting signs of stress. Possibly trauma. This can manifest in various ways. Including aggression. The vet suggested there might be more to Max's behavior than meets the eye. Perhaps he had sensed a threat to Ben that they had yet to grasp fully. A shiver ran down Sarah's spine. The vet's words mirrored Detective Ramirez's earlier hint that the incident might be more than a simple dog attack. Could someone have intentionally provoked Max? Exploiting his protective instincts to dangerous levels? Had Ben's loyal companion been manipulated into becoming an unwitting weapon? A chilling realization took hold in Sarah's mind. Emily. With her saccharine smiles and unnerving interest in Ben, had she found a way to manipulate Max? to coax out his gentle nature and turn it into something sinister. The sterile atmosphere of the police station offered no solace. Across from Sarah, Detective Ramirez listened intently as she recounted her visit to the shelter and the veterinarian's unsettling observations. Despite lingering doubts about Max, Sarah's conviction grew, overshadowing any uncertainty. She was certain another player was involved someone adept at manipulating both dogs and humans. As Detective Ramirez scribbled in his notebook, a furrow formed on his brow. Your neighbor appears to be a person of interest in another case. He remarked cryptically. We may need to speak with her sooner rather than later. The journey home passed in a blur. Sarah couldn't shake the feeling that time was slipping away. If Emily was indeed implicated, 
Could Ben be in danger? Two days later. Ben was discharged from the hospital. And Sarah eagerly retrieved Max from the shelter. Despite his evident stress. The veterinarian assured them that Max showed no signs of aggression. Realizing they couldn't blame the dog. Relief flooded both Sarah and Ben. With Max back. They felt a renewed sense of security. Life slowly returned to normalcy. With Sarah returning to work on a part-time basis and Ben readjusting to his routine with Max by his side. However. Weeks later. A nagging sense of dread weighed heavily on Sarah's heart. On a particular Tuesday morning. She felt compelled to rush home. Arriving at 1 p.m. To find the house empty. With only a note on the fridge stating that Emily had taken Ben to the doctor. Panic set in as each passing moment felt like an eternity. Hours blurred until headlights illuminated the driveway. Sarah's stomach churned as Emily assisted Ben with exaggerated care. Then it happened. Leaning in too closely. Emily's demeanor shifted from supportive to possessive. Causing Sarah to gasp. Ben recoiled, triggering rage in Emily. Who lunged toward him. His wheelchair teetered precariously tipping over as he struggled to maintain balance. A scream surged in Sarah's throat. In an instant, Max was by her side, sensing the tension. With remarkable speed, he barreled into Emily, knocking her aside forcefully. She crashed to the ground, emitting a sharp cry of pain. Meanwhile, Ben tumbled from his wheelchair, but Max positioned himself to cushion the fall. Sarah sprinted to Ben's side, finding him dazed but thankfully unharmed. Max hovered over Emily, his stance poised for further action. But it became unnecessary. She lay crumpled on the ground, her body racked with sobs. Detective Ramirez's arrival felt almost surreal to Sarah. She could barely recall dialing him. Yet suddenly he was there, swiftly removing Emily from the scene. The following morning, Ramirez returned, presenting Sarah with her purse, the same one found in Emily's car. A knot formed in Sarah's stomach as she recognized it. Ramirez's words hit her like a wave of cold dread. Emily had used it as a tool. Exploiting its contents, Ben's appointments and therapist's address, to further her sinister agenda. Ramirez proceeded to unveil the chilling truth about Emily's past. She had been the driver in the accident that had left Ben paralyzed. Driven by a disturbing obsession, she had resurfaced in their lives. Warped by trauma in unimaginable ways. While understanding Emily's motives couldn't erase the scars. It provided Sarah with a semblance of closure. Yet. Sarah's thoughts turned to Max. Almost as if reading her mind. Ramirez revealed the results of tests conducted on the Cheetos found at the scene. They were laced with a lethal substance. Intended to cause organ failure and death. In her twisted logic. Emily had believed that Ben's demise would absolve her guilt. Max. Sensing the danger. Had likely attempted to intervene. First trying to snatch the tainted snack from Emily's grasp. When that failed. He had no choice but to act. Toppling Ben to prevent him from consuming the deadly treat. What a tale of resilience and redemption. Sarah. Ben. And Max have truly overcome immense challenges to find peace and happiness. It's heartwarming to see them thriving despite the darkness of their past. As for Emily. Her descent into madness serves as a sobering reminder of the complexities of the human mind. Thankfully. I haven't personally experienced trusting a neighbor who turned out to be evil. However, stories like these remind us to remain cautious and vigilant. Even in our own communities. It's a testament to the power of storytelling that we can explore such themes and learn from the experiences of others.